Hey, Composing Gloves here, and today we're going to be looking at da 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 parallel processing. So this can get actually very complicated, but the idea is pretty simple. What you have is you have something coming in here, right? So we have our drum loop coming in here. All right, cool. Then you send it through another channel. So it's coming through in parallel because this guy is going out to the master and this guy is also going out to the master, but he's also, this guy is coming through both of these channels. This is really cool because now we can do something in one channel and blend it into taste. I do this all the time. You'll actually even notice it's built into my scheme here. So I have Harmer and it's also got a send. So I can send signal to this parallel bus and I can, you know, do things to it and blend it in so I can be sort of more creative. You can do literally endless things, like endless. So we're not going to, I'm not going to like do a whole bunch of videos on this. Like just get creative, put effects on the chains over there. Like, oh, I need more sustain. I'm going to make a, a version of this with more sustain and then blend it in. So we're going to look at a couple examples just to give you some starting points. But like, this is really up to you, like how create, how creative and crazy you want to get. Because used to stop you from doing this. Whoa, look at all these parallel things you could do. Like, holy crap, like you get really crazy. We're just gonna look at one. So, okay, this is coming in. One of the things you need to worry about, but also don't need to worry about it at the same time, is things coming out the same level when you add a bus. If you subtract six decibels from both channels, it actually will come out the same value. However, you're gonna be changing things differently. So this is at, like a lot of the time that doesn't even matter. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna remove this for now, right? And we're gonna just, we're gonna be like, okay, we have this going on. I'm gonna also turn this down because that's just really loud. It's like, all right, I want to uh, add some distortion to this. I wanna add some sustain to this. So I'm gonna go on here. I'm gonna add in a, uh, let's see here. Let's, let's do our distortion through our compression. So let's grab a compressor. We'll just grab a fruity compressor. Okay, so we've got our fruity compressor, da 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 da. And we're gonna bring our threshold down, you know, pretty substantially. And then we're gonna change our attack and release to be super close together. So it's gonna create this distortion. This is something that used to be done quite often, but not, not with Fruity Compressor, but with an analog compressor. So you'd use your compressor to, to do really fast attack and release. So it's essentially rewriting the waveform. And if we turn it on, we'll get a crunchier version of it. So if we were to just listen to uh, this. So that's like what we're adding to the sound there. So it's kind of a cool sound. So to show you what this is doing by itself, I'm gonna solo this guy and let him go out. And I'm also gonna add the Fruity compressor on this channel and then just do the same thing. So bam, bam, bring this down, bring the ratio up. I didn't bring the ratio up over here. We need the ratio up. And we will get something like this. That's gnarly. Cool. So that's what we have going on. So that's kind of a cool deal. We're going to turn that off and we're going to blend that into taste because you might be going, why would you want that in your sound? Well, it can add an element of crunchiness and aggressiveness to the sound. So, you know, you play it. That's what we have. So we blend it into taste. We don't want it to be too noticeable because you saw that. If we go overboard, it's going to sound terrible. But if we put it in just a little bit, fills it up a little bit, makes it sound nice. And because we're changing the level so drastically and doing things over here, that when we blend it in, you're just going to have to use your ears and set a level, right? It's just like anything else. So we may consider sending both of the, both these out to a new bus where we could control it with just one volume knob instead. So like later on, if we want to change this to general overall balance, we can just you know move one thing, which is really great. So to do that, we're going to control click these guys and just control click there. And so they're both going to this channel or maybe not control click there because then we'd have an issue. So what I've done is I've also, I've still maintained my routing. So yeah, you want to be careful about just make sure you know what you're doing, where your crap's going. So All right, pretty cool. So we've achieved our balance. Now let's say, oh, we want to get crazier. Let's add a, um, a wave shaper. And, as, and now you also notice there's some flanging sort of going on too. And the reason why that's going on is because we've got the similar data. And it's, like, it's like a flanger, phaser, chorus, whatever you want to call it. It sounds like flanging. And the reason why that's going on is because the data is the same. It's similar, very similar data, but it's been altered. So it sums differently, creating this illusion. So it's not quite the same thing as like... So flangers and choruses and stuff like that, you can do all sorts of things to achieve very similar effects um, but like the static definition of this is a chorus is a deviation in pitch where flanger is a deviation in time. And so we're getting those deviations and you get this like mix of stuff going on, which is what's creating that. Because when we listened to it by itself and just had that distortion, it didn't sound like that. That's what it sounded like. 
So, but when we put it together and mix it in, we get that sort of a sound. So that's where that sound sort of comes from. So we can get crazier, but as we learn about delays and things you can put on, additional things here like mid-side processing we haven't covered yet. So there's a whole bunch of additional things you can do with this parallel bus, but you see endless possibility. So we can like mix this into taste. Let's do another example. So let's go ahead and mute this one and go ahead and send this guy to a new channel. And on this channel, we're gonna route him into here. I'm gonna name this the drum bus. Another quick note about stuff like this is you can, there are things in here you'll see named like bus compressors and they're solid bus compressor. And there are certain compressors and the way they deal with processing signal that actually do well when they're dealing with a whole bunch of signals. So some, some compressors don't do so great when you give them like, you know, an entire, like a whole track and run it through this compressor. It might not sound as great as say, for example, another compressor. So this, some of these compressors are referred to as bus compressors because they're made for that. So they, they have a sonic quality that people like about it. But anyways, we're gonna turn that off. And so we've got our thing coming into this channel right here and also coming out just regular like. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this guy off and let's come up with something creative to do with him. So let's, uh, let's EQ it different, right? So let's go ahead and give it a, a liberal, yeah, let's give it a liberal boost here, a cut here, maybe like a big boost here. And so we can see what's going on there. And um, maybe that's all we want to do. Maybe we want to increase the sustain. And instead of using a traditional compressor, I'm going to use a transient master compressor. And I'm going to bring the attack down and just leave the sustain where it's at. So it's going to be contributing general volume. So as we bring this up now. Maybe that's something you want. Maybe it's something you don't want. What would be interesting is if we also... Uh, I'll leave that out for now because we haven't covered it. But let's go ahead and instead of doing that, because I'm not a big fan of that, let's go ahead and just add some punch to it. So we'll increase, we'll actually, we'll leave it where it's at and just decrease the sustain. So that's pretty cool. And we another thing we could even do is we could even pan it differently while we're moving around. So this guy is controlling the panning of a bus, which is like crazy. Oh my gosh. So it still sounds like it's in the middle. It's just now we've created a weird situation, but it's we're being creative. We're coming up with cool things. So anyways, that's just, we're just entering the world of parallel processing. Pretty much everything you know about processing, you can now apply to parallel processing and get really crazy cool effects. You want to be careful of just volume levels that go on and just making sure that they all line up nicely and that you've, you've got a level you like. So you, you're probably going to want to consider making a bus of some kind. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Support me on Patreon. I do private lessons if you are interested. Subscribe and have a blessed day.